Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about what's new in IDA 9.1. At the time of recording this video, I only had access to 9.1 release candidate. So I'm going to go over the list of what's new features from the RC. With that, let's get started. Okay, so going to the what's new list. First thing here is ZSTD compression and IDB files. And this is only applicable when we are saving with compression. So if you are like me, for instance, working with large files, here I have a crash dump and I'm going to open it. Now this crash dump is not that big. So if we look how big it is, it says here 400 megabytes. This is with regular storing. So IDA simply collects the files and puts them in a single I64. Now it's fine like that, but we have 400 megabytes. Now in the past, IDA also had compression, but with ZSTD now, notice how fast it opens. And also notice the sizes between 55 megabytes versus the 439 megabytes. So already it is very fast and also we are compressing at the same time. So in the past I avoided using the compression feature because it's slow. But now let me exit and save it. Notice it should be relatively fast to deal with 5, 5 megabytes or the original size which is 400 megabytes. So this is a welcome change. Other things related to IDA teams the delta changes. In the past when I use IDA teams I noticed that every time I check in the file to share with the team members it is checking in the whole database and that was really too much just to share hundreds of megabytes. Now with this version it introduces delta changes so when you check in or send the changes you're only sending the difference. That should be faster and also save disk space. Processor module improvement, TMS 320C6 as well. Now there are new series supported, RISC 5 and RH850 as well improved. Tricore instructions, the MFCR, MTCR, and so on. Uh, decompiler improvements, so now an ARM64 ILP 32 bit mode, which they say here it should add support for Apple Watch. Improved decompilation of system code in ARM64, more PowerPC improvements, and so on. Debuggers, there are a bunch of changes here in the debuggers. There is support for time travel debugging with the WinDBG debugger plugin. I'm going to demo that in a bit. Also supports for switching from 32-bit 64-bit mode than WoW64. So also this is interesting where IDA will now detect the bitness of segments and act accordingly. And also IPv6 addresses can be used with the remote debuggers. Now let me show you real quick the time travel debugging. For time travel debugging, this is something that has to do with WinDebug. So first thing is we're going to install WinDebug, get it from the store for instance. This is the modern WinDebug. If we press Ctrl E or go to the file menu and say launch executable with time travel for, ex for instance and here the time travel option you can select it. Here this is a simple program. You can pass the arguments and then when we're ready we just simply configure and record. Now before I hit that button let me really show you what's happening behind the scenes. So if we go to process here the task manager check the process list and open file location. This is where the WinDebug package is installed. Now inside it we have a bunch of folders. We are interested in AMD64. This is where we're going to get the debugger engine and configure either to pick it up. And also inside it we should have the time travel debugging helpers and executable. So when we're using WinDebug UI to do time travel debugging and to record behind the scenes it's invoking ttd command line to do the recording so that's what's going to happen so let's keep this folder here on the side and create a recording so i'm gonna create a recording here i'm gonna put it to see for example ttd2 
and then we're gonna replay that so I'm gonna simply let it record the execution of simple.exe into this folder all right here it is now it started it broke in this ntdll i'm gonna hit a five let it run all the way to terminate process it's a simple process there's nothing much really now with that we have done that i can now simply go to the folder and we should see the artifacts from the time travel debugging we should see a bunch of artifacts but most importantly this is a crash dump that we can consume with when debug and hence use the time travel debugging new feature in ida and before I do that, let me mention that Airbus also had a time travel debugging for IDA since a long time. So we should be able to find it here. But I guess now with the new release of IDA, this became obsolete. So this is time travel debugging. Here it supports that. And also this uses a different approach than what IDA uses. Apparently, they have reverse engineered the TTD file format and uh, they don't have reliance on debugger engine and so on. Whereas for IDA, now we're going to consume this file. So how can we consume this file? Let me show you. First thing is we need to open IDA. And here I have IDA installed in my tools folder. I'm going to go to the config and we're going to search for debug tools. And we're going to point it to the debug engine, the latest debug engine with which we took the TTD file. And I took a copy into DBG engine. So what I did here is simply once I discovered where is the AMD folder is installed, I took everything inside the AMD folder and I put it in my debugger engine tool here. So that's a copy from the WinDebug package. And once I did that, I edit either CFG and made it point accordingly. Now that it's pointing there, I can go to the folder, for example. And now I am here where I have the run file, which is a crash dump. I now can point at it and simply run IDA 9.1. And this is the difference. IDA will detect it is time travel debugging. So this is key. If you've uh, done everything correctly, that's how you should pick it up. And now we let IDA finish loading and setting up. And here we are. We are now debugging forward. And this is the same break that we got when we were doing the recording. So here it is. Now this is not real execution. This is simply a replay. And we can see some artifacts here, TDD, record, CPU, and so on. Now we can do the regular stuff, but there are new stuff as well. So here, what is new? We can do the basic forward debugging, so we can do continue, single step, and so on. But also now, we have the backwards control. So we can continue backwards, like run backwards, step backwards, step over backwards. And of course, if we have breakpoints, whether they're forward, the breakpoints don't care. If we execute, if we were executing backwards, and backwards we hit the breakpoint, we hit the breakpoint. So there is no issue with breakpoints. We can hit them for going forward or we can hit them going backwards. So let me single step a bit. In fact, I should be able to go to the entry point. So remember, since we're using WinDebug, I have access here. And I can say EX entry, for example. And this is the executable entry point. That's simple. EXE, for example, we can uh, run resume and we are resuming forward at the entry point here it is it won't trace into the kernel but uh, it is doing the forward tracing so if i go here for example put a breakpoint let it run and it hit here now the registers will of course reflect the forward execution now if i want i can simply start debugging backwards so here i assign the hotkey to the debug backwards I put Control Shift F7. So now look at this, Control Shift F7, we're going backwards. And of course, I can go to the original uh, location in NTDLL if I can find it. And I can put the breakpoint there and as well run backwards, resume backwards and it should run to the NTDLL entry point. So for example, this is where we started from. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and say debugger 
and continue backwards. So uh, since I had a breakpoint at the EXE entry, we get we gonna hit it and also continue backward one more time. It should go all the way back to the beginning of the program. So I can go forward and backward, and I can also interface with WinDebug here. The same stuff. You can send additional TTDD commands and so on. Remember here you have full access to WinDebug. So if you're used to just using WinDebug interface why not use ida and when debug at the same time from inside ida all right so let's continue with respect to ida lib not much really we can check here ida lib.hpp there is a new additional argument we can pass to the open database here where we can pass arguments that usually we would be passing to ida ida feeds as well implemented detection of rust version so remember from the last ida 9.0 review we spoke about ida feeds and how it's a mechanism to run signature matching in parallel trying to find the best signature for your database ui improvements we have a very simple improvement here in the types so for example if i go to the local types shift f1 insert go to c syntax i'm inserting something now if i start typing and the syntax is correct notice now as as i type a member i will see the offset next to it here so it's just a visual indication so for example int a int b int c and now i can see those offsets this is the same way if i was editing so if i was editing i already see in the editing mode but now it's also available in the creation mode for a single item and then there is a bunch of changes uh, in full elf stuff lots of processor module especially like arm tms risk v85 tricore and so on plugins some slight improvement to the pdb mixig as well just very minor saying goomba now also the plugin that the office case supports additional mbas and so on uh, the teams we spoke about it another interesting uh, thing about the installer is it bundles flare either clang and yes utils etc they used to be their own separate downloads that you download alongside the sdk but now if we go to ida rc we should find a folder here called tools and we'll have the flare for signature stuff ida clang for type information library for ids files for int files and another ti lib so these used to be individual zip files that you download now once you install ida you get them they're not that big six megabytes very handy and immediately available to you scripting a bunch of new stuff for ida python a lot of new things and the sdk as well and i forgot to mention when we spoke about time travel debugging you, you also get that facility as a programmer. So as a programmer, if you wanted to implement backward debugging in your debugger plugin, you now have additional events. So for example, we can see most of the SDK now has stuff related to backwards debugging. Step backwards, step over backwards, continue backwards, and so on. And as a debugger writer, you have as well access to backwards um, facilities so you can implement uh, time-based debuggers or going forward and backwards in the debugging either python uh, for, for instance here you will not see any more q string or eat which come from the c sdk you should see now integer and strings so for example if i switch here to python say either get name for example look at the get name here let's uh, keep the cursor let's uh, for example you, you see here ea ea int the arguments no more q string is a string and so on so more cleaning up better hints in either python ui we have additional syntax highlighting uh, just some uh, decompiler additions a new configuration option show banner and for the config file and the rest of the stuff we talk and as usual a bunch of bug fixes so that's it for 9.1
all right so thanks a lot for watching what's new in uh, 9.1 i personally like uh, the zstd now since i work with large database this proves that it's gonna save uh, time and also disk space and i also like the type travel debugging especially that it's available to us programmatically thank you and i'll see you next time